Hey guys, in this video I'd like to talk about cookies in the browser and how you edit them or delete them or create them and how they're used within authentication systems. So let's begin by taking a look at the cookies that are passed from the web server to our web browser whenever we log into the My Georgia Southern portal. So I haven't logged in yet, I've just accessed the page and it's already sent down four cookies one of which we can guess is a session ID of some sort that associates what we're doing here in the browser with a session back on the server. And we can test out these theories by deleting each of the cookies, and I do that just by highlighting them and pressing delete, and then refreshing the page. You'll notice they come right back. You'll also notice that if we were to edit the cookie by just double clicking on it and adding something to the cookie, or taking away something from the cookie, then when we refresh the page, this session ID would not be recognized by the server and it would pass us a new one. So you can see right off the bat, we understand a couple of things about the what's going on on the server. We've got some sort of session ID token that's been sent down as a cookie. And I'm not sure what these other values are that start with TS, but I do notice that if I delete them, and refresh the page, one or more of them come right back. So let's take a look, now that we know how to uh, delete cookies and maybe edit them, let's take a look at how the cookies are actually used for authentication purposes. We're gonna do that by logging into the website. And once we're logged in, we take a look at the cookies that are actually set. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we were authenticated at the cas.georgiasouthern.edu website, and now we're on the my.georgiasouthern.edu website. And the cookies that I find here are all under the my.georgiasouthern.edu domain, and we've got a couple of these new cookies we haven't seen before. We've got a GSU portal cookie and a PHP SSID cookie, as well as those two TS cookies that we're not sure what to do. Now, a side note at this point, what we're showing you here should not be in any way construed as hacking because I'm using my own cookies for my own validated session to mess around in here. And it's no different when I delete a cookie from just clicking the log out option. Uh, when I edit a cookie, it's going to kick me out. So none of what we're doing here is uh, unethical or illegal. We're merely looking at what the server is providing to us. So what we're gonna do is first off, experiment around and find out what cookie is actually used to authenticate us with the web server. And I'm gonna guess that these two TS cookies are not part of the system since they appeared in our browser before we even logged in. So if I delete them, refresh the page, I note we're still logged in. It recreated one of the cookies, that's fine. That means one or both of these cookies are used to authenticate us. Now that we've got an idea of which ones authenticate us, we can try deleting them and see if we get logged out. So I'm gonna guess the PHP session ID cookie is important, and I'm gonna delete the GSU portal cookie. And then I refresh, and I'm kicked out. It looks like both of those are probably important. So I'm gonna log back in and go back to my cookies. And now we're gonna show you what would happen if someone was able to run a malicious script on your website in order to pick up these cookies, or if they were able to intercept your messages going back and forth between the server. Because if they could take these values here, we'll ignore the two TS values for now. If they could take these two values and insert them into their own web browser, they would essentially hijack your session. So let's look at what that might look like. I'll start by copying the first cookie's name. And here I've got uh, Chrome running with the same login page. And what I'm gonna do is just ignore this for the moment. And I'm gonna create a new cookie here with that value, GSU portal. Then I'm gonna come back over and copy the value but notice it should be in the my.georgiasouthern.edu domain. So I'm gonna copy that domain and put that in here. And now I have that same cookie. 
it disappears because we're not actually on that domain at the moment. We're looking at CAS cookies, not my .Georgia Southern cookies. So it's okay that it disappeared. We're going to grab this other cookie. We're going to add it in. Copy the value. Paste that in. And then do my Georgia Southern.edu. Now, what I'd like to do is actually see what happens if I go to my.georgiasouthern.edu. And in this case, I want to actually go to the portal page, which shows that we're actually logged in already. And bingo, I just hijacked a session. And I can see those cookies down here as GSU portal and PHP session ID. Note they match between the two browsers. Now, if I were to actually log in the correct way to Chrome, it would have given me a different cookie for each of these. So in essence, we have hijacked our session. Again, this is not in any way uh, hacking the server. This is my own session that I'm using. I'm just demonstrating how these tokens are passed back and forth between the server in order to prove that you've already authenticated yourself. Now, of course, the last thing I want to do, since I've shown you these cookies in the browser, is I'd like to log out, which is going to invalidate these cookies and make them no longer useful. I'll do the same in the other browser. And those values are no longer good.